afternoon. See a few familiar faces out there. Um, have a booth here and happy to talk to anybody after this uh, conference or this uh, presentation. First slide here actually shows you examples of mineralization we have on three of our projects. Top is Beaton's Creek, the middle one is Comet Well, and the bottom is Edgina. These are very unusual deposits, not your average gold deposit. These are conglomerate hosted gold deposits that uh, many people aren't all that familiar with. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit. Disclaimer, please refer to this to the website. You can read it at your leisure. All right, we have about 164 million shares out. We are Canadian listed, but we're focused on exploration in Australia. Our largest shareholder is Kirkland Lake Gold. Uh, as you know, Kirkland Lake's been a, a great success over the past couple of years. They've put uh, money into us in a placement in September, I believe, of 2017, based on this discovery we had at Carruther. Uh, we also have Newmont on our register, as, as well as Mark Creasy, who's a well-known Australian prospector. You know, basically, uh, the, the share registry is kind of a history of the company. It's all the people that, that came together to help, help me and help Novo put this project together. We have about $43 million in cash, and that cash is very important because it's what we're going to need to move this project forward. All right, so I'm going to start at a peculiar place. I'm going to start at Earth around 3 billion years ago. All right. Uh, Earth presently has multiple continents, North, South America, Africa, so forth, but uh, back in early Earth time, it didn't look like that. There was really one small continent out there. Uh, if you Google Valbara, V-A-A-L-B-A-R-A, -A -A, uh, you'll find reference to the first continent on this planet. Anyway, Valbera was, the, the name is derived from a combination of the Catval Craton, South Africa, and the Pilbara Craton in Australia. Basically, that little blob of land you see there, about the size of New Zealand, was where all the action took place back in early Earth time. Right? So one end of that was rifted off and became South Africa, the other end became Northwest Australia. But on that little platform, the first sedimentary rocks, including gold-bearing conglomerates were laid down in early Earth history. All right, now I'm going to jump forward and talk to you about why we're, we're here in Australia. We're looking for the analog to the deposits in South Africa. I started work here for Newmont about 2004. Uh, tried to get some deal done, deals done at that time. Creasy was a bit difficult, but uh, long story short, it took a little while. Left Newmont. Uh, put Novo together in 2009, was able to get Mark Creasy across the, the line, and then Newmont came back in in 2013. So we ended up making a happy family after all. We have a large land holding in Australia, currently about 12,000 square kilometers. Much of it is 100% owned. We also have some joint ventures uh, you see in red and green there, but I'll talk about these projects briefly, each, each of the three projects. All right, so once again, back to the rocks. These are conglomerates. They're basically gravels, you know, boulders and cobbles and whatnot that were laid down in an ancient basin uh, around 2.74 billion years ago. Very similar in age to the Bitwaterstrand Basin in South Africa. In many respects, these deposits are similar to those in South Africa, but there's also some, some differences, and I'll show you those in, in detail. So the top, again, Beaton's Creek, middle is Comet Well and Purdy's Reward, and the bottom is Edgina. Okay, now. That's the gold. That is actually gold that comes from each of those conglomeratic deposits. Edgina, you can see it's quite coarse, often multigram, you know, tens of grams even, uh, nuggets. These are very, very coarse gold systems. Comet, well, not so bad, you know, a few grams each. Beaton's Creek, even less nuggety. It's, you know, point X gram, call it nuggets. But nonetheless, geologically, these are very challenging. You know, think about it. You can't just walk up and grab a rock chip sample and say, ah, this rock grades X grams per ton. Can't do it. Got a bulk sample. You got to think of these things more like, uh, say, a diamond deposit or something like that. Gold's there. No problem. We've been able to overcome the challenges. But it is a true headbang. OK, I'm going to talk about Beaton's Creek. That's where we started. All right, we, when Newmont came in, we did a lot of technical work around the coarse gold issue, determined sample size, you know, how, how we could uh, start quantifying this bizarre conglomeratic stuff. Here you see pictures of the rocks close up. They're basically boulder conglomerates. 
The gold occurs in the sanding matrix that glues the boulders together. We tried trial mining this in 2017. This, this, uh, or sorry, 2016. This trial mine actually gave us not only, you know, you know, demonstrated the mineability. You know, it's free dig. It's easy. It's near surface, flat deposits, con continuous, no problem. It also confirmed grade. That was the most important part. In fact, grades are are quite good. Current resource of Beaton's Creek, we've only drilled up a small fraction of it, but we have about you know, 670,000 ounces combined, MI and I. It's around two and a half grams, but we look to expand it here shortly. And without going into great detail, we've, we've refined our techni you know, uh, techniques to, to develop the wireframe models. A lot of this involves core drilling and, and downhole videography and stuff like this, but uh, top image there shows our current resource, that's the 670 ounces plus or minus. The bottom is the new wireframe that we've developed, and we expect shortly to announce uh, a significant upgrade of the resource of Beaton's Creek. We've also done bulk sampling there, which has confirmed, if not demonstrated, the grades are, are a fair bit better than what, what's stated in our current resource. All right. I'm going to jump over to Carartha. This project popped up in 2017, was found by local prospectors who used metal detectors to I identify the gold. They were, you know, there's many people in Carartha who've made thousands and thousands of dollars, paid off their house, bought boats, whatever, out of the gold they found on the ground. When I found out about this, we jumped in with both feet. We staked a huge area, did some deals for uh, additional land in the area. This is what it's all about. It's a very coarse gold system. Nuggets, you can see, are well-rounded, water-worn nuggets. They're trapped in the matrix of the conglomerate. Beautiful de deposit in, in the respect of geology, but man, coarse gold, it's a challenge. But we've overcome those challenges. You can see in the top image, we've identified two gold-bearing units. These are two gold-bearing conglomeratic units within the sequence. They're right at the base of the Fortescue group. They're flat-lying or nearly flat-lying. You can see nuggets from each respective unit in the lower images. One's in the lower conglomerate, you know, kind of point X, one gram kind of nuggets. The ones in the upper unit are usually multi-gram nuggets, but uh, both are coarse gold systems. Grades, you can see here, uh, we did bulk sampling, you know, two, two, or sorry, five to 10 ton samples last year uh, that demonstrated grades, you know, one to, to, you know, I can't even read the screen, four and a half grams in the, the upper unit and then say two to two to six grams in the lower unit. Again, the geology demonstrates these are very continuous horizons. They're not just little channels or something. These are sheet-like deposits that extend for kilometers. Real quick, we did ore sorting with Tomra Corporation. They, they uh, developed these sorting machines and in the last two or three years, they've made quantum leaps with being able to identify gold particles in rock as the material passes along a conveyor. The machine picks the gold out, the, the little pieces of rock that have the gold out. If you come by the booth, I'll show you videos of our trial test work last year. Absolutely amazing stuff. If you ever lose your car keys in a cement mixer, all you have to do is let the cement dry, crush it up, put it through one of these sorters, pop, pop right back out. Okay, Edgina. Uh, this is an extension of the Carartha Gold Project. It's really a, a, an area that we put together late last year because we, we got smart and learned there's a lot more to these systems. And basically, what we have here is, is a, a conglomerate, much like a comet well, but it's eroded back in recent time. And all the gold that was in that conglomerate has been redistributed in this modern lag gravel that spans a, a vast area, you know, tens if not hundreds of kilometers. All right, so this is our deposit. It sits right at the surface. It's a meter thick, a little bit of sand and soil on top. Otherwise, the, the gravel is free dig, but the gold in it was derived from these conglomerates. Right? So you, the bottom image shows a gold deposit. That is the deposit, it's just a flat surface. We put the, this to the test last year. We did a, a, for our first bulk sample, we'll do many, many more this year, but we, we excavated about 100 cubic meters just to give it a go. We put it through our little test plant, out popped 108 grams, mostly coarse gold. Mostly, mostly coarse gold. You know, people say, well, this, this is low grade. You know, it's low grade, but we're talking pretty easy mining. <laughs> so free dig, right at surface. This thing covers, again, many square kilometers. We're going to try to demonstrate the continuity and size of the system uh, this coming year. 
A lot's coming up. Uh, it's a very dynamic story. A lot of technical work needs to be done, but we are there to meet the challenge and happy to talk about it more.